Good evening. It is Friday night and welcome to the Gin Night Inn with me. My name is Susanna, for those that don't know me, and this is my colleague Joe. Hi, Joe. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Here we go. Lovely. So if you are new to our Friday night suggestion, look, I can't even speak tonight, <laughs> shenanigans, that's tricky to say, then welcome, welcome indeed. And if you are one of our many followers, then thank you for staying with us. So tonight we are going to have a great night. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to follow a dis journey of discovery. So more about that later. So we at Yorkton, we're a newish company. We're only two years old. We're just babies, aren't we, Joe? Absolutely, yes. But we've yeah. got to some gins that have been crashing the records all around the world. And really doing rather well and we've just won a big award haven't we joe we have i don't know if there's a picture of it but we've just won best shop in york, yay! In york tourism awards yay there we, we are. did there we are Ooh. Ooh, no wonder really do my... people are actually using that on their walking tour aren't they come out of the shambles and take a picture of our lovely old tudor building exactly <laughs> we always photobomb don't we always rush to the front to always the so arriving with our umbrella out we go Extras in Absolutely. the background. Absolutely. <laughs> there we go. So, as I said, we're going to go on a journey tonight. We're going to talk about our discovery boxes and we're going to just wander through them and see what we can do. So, what we're going to do is take each gin in turn. We're going to make two cocktails. We're going to make one from the box, so one is the recommended <laughs> serve, and we're going to make one slightly off the wall, something a little bit different as well. Are you ready? Are you ready, Joe? Are we ready? Uh, oh, always ready. Born ready. I've got all my gins right. and all it's all ready all here. The, oh, you've got all the gins. We're all good. All the gins, so, all the bits. Got the discovery box. I've got my, in fact, I'll show you. Have a look. I'll whip off my apron, as it were. <laughs> That's how it comes. It comes in a big box like that. And you open it up. Whoop, as I'm knocking over my glasses, as I go. And I will tilt it very gently. There's some bumps and bits and pieces you get. But in there, look, everyone, you get a whole tray full of goodies in there. Yay! Looks amazing. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the top with our York Gin Classic London Dry. So, uh, Joe, it's a yes, dry do. It's a dry yeah, do. Crack, crack on with some cocktails, girl. Well, I think it's me to start, and I'm going to start with the in the box uh, suggestion, which is a classic gin and tonic, the perfect gin and tonic. So. To make the perfect gin and tonic, you need one of these. You need a great big glass. I'm not going to tell you what it's called because that's one of the questions later. This is a great big York gin glass. First of all, I'm going to put a big load of ice in there. Now, Joe's very fancy and she has the large ice cubes. I'm afraid I'm just a normal human being and I've only got normal ice cubes. So I'll yeah. put quite a few. Just I'll put a few in. And then I'm going to give a very generous measure of our York gin classic London dry in there. And how many sides of one of these measures are there, Joe? There's only one side, and that's the big side. There's only one side. It's always the big side. I'm going to pop <laughs> that in. Yeah, I'm going to pop some refreshingly light tonic water. Fever Tree is our favourite. Now that is just to your taste. I like quite a lot, so I. Popped. Yeah, well, I do too. Emma just likes a thimbleful, but I like quite a bit. Oh, she's hello, hardcore. Mrs. She's hardcore. So I can put my sister, please. Oh hello. And then in there, I'm actually just going to put some juniper berries. Now, as we all know, gin is juniper led, so why not put in there something that goes with it perfectly? And here I am with my lovely. We're all giving a whoosh. And there we Give go. Cheers, Ooh, Jenny what are you I like the sound of a nice pot with elderflower gin. It's mm. got to be done. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, that's just lovely. What are you making, darling? I am going to make the very first gin. In the very first book of cocktails. Ooh. Now it was called, let me just check, I'm getting this right. It was called William Tarrington's Cooling Cups and Dainty Drinks. And I am going to make a dainty ginger. So I'm going to put some lovely things in here. I am going to uh, put in some London Dry as we, as we uh, are on London Dry to start with. Um, some ginger syrup, some orange curacao. I've got my orange orange wow. there. And my bitters, if you know me at all, you know I absolutely love my bitters. So I've gone heavy on the bitters. I do love that. And masses and masses of ice because I like a lot of ice. Um, I actually made the ginger syrup by using um, sugar syrup. You know, you could get, um, you normally buy it for your cocktails. And I just put some ginger in it, heated it up, and then pressed it through a sieve. And it, oh, it's absolutely delicious. Anyway, Ooh, I haven't yummy. tried one of these ever. This is the first time I'm trying Ooh. one. So go. Cheers. Oh, and I made one of Susanna's fancy twirly things look because she's just oh. fancy. 
You, honestly, that's really fancy, that one. Cheers, darling. Mm. Oh, honest to goodness, that is absolutely scrum. Is it Give really it yummy? Try. Give that a oh. try. It's oh, really, so really simple and so nice. Oh, now, it's just mm. started to hail here, which is quite weird, but, you know, we'll give it a whirl. Nice, see what nice big ice cubes. Go and grab a and few. Exactly. I'll just run out and get a bucket and collect all that ice. <laughs> you <laughs> you <laughs> said it hailed earlier and they were massive. They were, they were car, massive. They? they were really massive. Right, let's get on with it. So, London Dry, what is it? That's my first question for this evening. What is a London Dry? Does it have to be made in London? I don't know. Well, I do know, actually, so I'll tell you later. But, <laughs> so, but that is question one. What is a London Dry? And does it have to come from London? Yes, indeed. We asked Philip Barton. I'm drinking your drink. Mm -hmm. Right then, question two. If you have been with us for a few weeks, this evening is actually a test. So mm. if you're not getting them all right, you're not listening. What is the name of this style of glass? Mm -hmm. And I'll take it in English or in its language of origin. So I'm feeling mm. generous. I'm feeling generous. You are so fancy. She's she's a she's a she is a linguist. She corrects me on my. I knew. I just fed you that one, Joe. <laughs> so we will learn all about languages later. But on to the next question because it sort of just dovetails beautifully in there. I would like to know which country drink, drinks the most gin. Mm. Well. I thought it was Yorkshire, but that's a county. So anyhow, which country, according to the latest data published in 2018 by Statistica, I would like to know who drinks the most gin. It's a very simple one. <laughs> Over to you, love. Right then. Some very famous people in your uh, multiple choice here, but only mm -hmm. one of them said this. Who actually said... The gin mm -hmm. and tonic has saved more Englishmen's lives and minds than all the doctors in the empire. Was it Ooh. good old Queen Vic? Mm -hmm. Was it Winston Churchill? Or was it George the Sixth? Oh, One of those fabulous people is a very big fan of the gin. Wow. It could Rich. have been any of them, to be honest, couldn't it? They all like to drink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And the next question. Now, when we first ran these a few weeks ago, I loved them. People loved them. We got a lot of comments on these. So we thought these were worth rerunning. So I would like to know for question five, which piece of art has our classic London Dry infinitely improved? Infinitely. Exactly. There it is. Do you like a gin, darling? Oh, don't mind if I do. Go on. Don't oh, mind if fill I us do. up. Fill us up. Oh, I must look to the ceiling. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Is Oops, that too much of a clue? I don't know. A clue I don't know. You were, it, telling me earlier, you were telling me earlier that those glasses hold a pint. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So someone's giving someone a pint of gin there. It'll be all right for tonight, won't he? Right, you go. I spend my life filling these glasses to the top and then wondering why, A, I'm a bit drunk, and B, I need to go to the loo all night. So there you go. Back to the top. And That's it. We're back to the answers already. That's we are. We're already back to the answers. Who would have thought it? Who would have, Who thought, would have thought it? it? Right. So... My question was about London Dry. What is London Dry? Well, it's a method. It's a method of making gin. And no, it doesn't have to be in London. Um, it can be anywhere as long as it's the same method. So basically, London Dry means that once you have distilled it, you can add nothing else apart from water. It's really as simple as that. And when we go through our gins, we'll tell you um, why some of them are not, uh, although they're based on London Dries, are not allowed to be called a London Dry. So it's all to do with the method. And it can be made anywhere. Absolutely. In fact, there's only one company that still makes it in London, isn't there? It certainly is. Beefeater. 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 Be of course, London was where the where they all were, and then over the yeah. years they've all moved out. Gradually all moved. Them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The water apparently was excellent. I can't believe it. But there you go. There you go. Over to you, darling. This is called a copper, a copper, or a copper de melon, or a balloon glass, and that was named by the fabulous Spaniards. Which brings Ooh. us very super neatly to the answer of the next question. It does. And I can see in the comments that actually most people got this. It is Spain. Look at them. Yeah. Spain are right at the top there. Uh, UK, you are only fourth. Please Slacking. We're slacking. Come on. We are definitely slacking. That is rubbish. Now, some people <laughs> may have had the answer. The Philippines. 
because uh, bef before 2018, the statistics before actually said that it was the Philippines. I find that hard to believe, actually. And now they know we're even in there. But honestly, if you Google it, which you shouldn't because you're in the middle of a quiz and a chit chat, you will find that um, the Philippines actually comes up in quite a lot of the answers. But we yeah. can believe more it's Spain, can't we? Even there, when you go on your holidays. They... Yeah, well, if you've, if you've ever been there with a barba, Larry, or some gin, they just do that until someone they falls do. off. Stop! Yes, Lauren Ingram. I'd like a pint of gin as well, Lauren Ingham. I'm with you, girl. Right. Everybody okay. likes a pint Next of gin. Next answer was, look, I can see lots of people have got this right. Well done, everybody who has. And it was, of course, Winston Churchill. I was a big it... fan of a gin and tonic. In fact, he was a massive fan of a gin, full stop, let's be quite honest. Because what he would really do is pour himself a very large gin over ice, nod towards Italy and thank them for their vermouth, but not actually pour any in. So yeah. he might be he might be recommending a gin and tonic for others, but he preferred a gin as it came. So, but actually, you have been to where this picture was taken, haven't you, Susanna? Oh, I have. This is taken in Capri or Capri or how are we going to pronounce it? Capri. 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 Yes, and this is a hotel on the island of Capri. Oh, Capri. Um, Capri. And it was a famous meeting between Churchill and Eisen, uh, Eisenstein. Eisenstein. Eisenhower. <laughs> That's on the beach. I think I've had too much gin already. I don't know about Eisenstein, but Eisenhower. Little Philip glass, a little Philip glass reference there for Sam. Yeah, there you go. But I have to tell you, it's the most beautiful island. But come away from where the busy, busy shops are. There's all the all the Gucci boutiques and all the rest of it. Come away, go to the other side of the island and have the most fabulous lunch in this incredible hotel. Yeah, anyway, it looks I'm great. Not, I, people, I, I tell you, I'm so sorry. I witter on about my Italian holiday constantly. <laughs> I know. And I'll, 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 I'll get off. Like, get and, Get Italy in. I'll be having a Negroni before we know it. And uh, so, which brings us, we're still in Italy. What a result. We, we are, are still in Italy. At, I know, I know. We're now at the creation of Adam. We, um, it took four years to, to paint and it was on, of course, the Sistine Chapel. Still is, it's, of course. It probably took four years because they were getting through a pint of gin every few minutes. I would hope so. I would blooming hope so. Now, of course, this is God giving life to the first man. Now, eagle-eyed viewers, and you will have to be eagle-eyed because that is somewhat disappointing. Yeah, Joe. Well, apparently, apparently it was a bit of a it was a bit of a thing. Well, a small thing in the in the yeah, Renaissance. Very. Um, um, because um, classical painters and sculptors, sculptors, um, created very small appendages for people who were supposed to be very very clever. And if you were more the earthy type with less brains, <laughs> you had a larger appendage. So there we go. That's what we're saying. We're all going Lady Chatterley over here. Uh, it's all a bit mellers, isn't it? Let's <laughs> we prefer a bit of mellers. All right, everyone. Enough. We've already come down to our base level. But the good news is we're moving on. We're moving on. We're staying in Italy. What a complete oh, result. I haven't even finished this one yet. Give well, us a job. Put it to one side because there's more coming. Ah. So we're moving on to our Roman fruit. And first of all, Joe is going to make us the cocktail that comes as the recommendation recommendation from the box. Oh, Tell us about it. Yeah, I'm, doing, I'm doing the one out of the lovely discovery box. So what, you, what do you do? You need a nice uh, long glass. You need a Collins glass, as Susanna will tell me. It's called a Collins glass. Yes, definitely glass. a Collins glass. Yeah, I mean, you want to fill that up with ice. You can hear me chinking away here. Yeah. So I don't have a counter like Susanna does, so I just have to do it like this. And show you. That's all right. I'll, I'll assist. Assist, my darling, my lovely, oh, my really? glamorous assistant. So here we've got our lovely Roman fruit with hibiscus flower, gives it a lovely pink colour, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries and apple. And I That's am nice. going to pour a nice generous measure of that. I'm going to do a Spanish measure and to hell with burgundy. In it goes. And I'm going to top that up with a fever tree, Sicilian lemon. Um, here we go. There Ooh. it is. That sounds nice, doesn't it? And then I'm going to take my uh, garnish from the Discovery Box garnish little bag. It's, it, 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 it's very plain. It, it comes with the colours on the front. And yes. that's actually the dried... Um, it's all the dried fruit and flowers that you get in Roman fruit. So I'm just going to pop that in there. Give it a bit of a stir. Mm. It's got a lovely yellow colour from that Sicilian lemonade. It's Looks yummy. smashing. Oh, it's really nice, really oh, fresh. Oh, good. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't I would think to put um, lemonade with um, oh. lemony lemon, 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 with lemon, the lemon. Roman fruit. That works really well, I like that. Oh, really good. Well, yeah. of course. What are you making, my, my darling? Well, 
Everybody that knows me knows I like a glass of fizz. So what could be better than gin and fizz? So I'm going to make a Roman fizz. So in there, I'm going to put a generous slug in my champagne glass. Uh, Joe, I must confess, remember last week I made one with fizz as well? Well, it was a beautiful evening and we went out onto our, onto our lovely patio and then we set fire, set fire. We set fire, <laughs> the fire, we set fire, fire to ourselves. Out. We put the fire pit <laughs> on and we were there having a lovely time. And I was obviously having a very nice time and I knocked over my champagne glass and it smashed into a zillion pieces. Yay! So I was very, very upset about it. So we've got a different champagne glass. Luckily, I'm awash with them. That's really good. And also, I love these little tiny bottles of champagne because- Yeah, they're super, they're super brilliant because they don't go flat. The big super one doesn't handy. go flat then, does it? Well, because my husband, Nick, he doesn't like a glass of fizz. No, so if I, I open a bottle, Mark, I've got to drink a bottle. You know? I'm the same. Mark wouldn't, Mark wouldn't thank me for a wouldn't fizz. I know. So in I've there, got, I'm going to... I've got a confession to make. I broke one of these last week. Oh, no. So I'm, that, I'm, that's I'm, really good I'm going because they're... Back they're into your gin for another few of those. Oh, I can't I have a cup of, without several of those. Oh. So I've topped that up with champagne, and I'm just going to put... Do you know what? It's Friday. I'm going to put two. I'm going to put two fresh raspberries. Woo! Well, Ali okay. Harrison, no, I, I, I was sober when I started the show. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> you should know. You know me well enough. I always look like this. Oh yeah, I did have a, I did have a bloody Mary, didn't I? He had a. <laughs> she, well, what do we call it? We call it a bloody Alice, don't we? Because it's not a bloody Mary, but it's not we with do. Bloody Alice, because the mm -hmm. wonderful mm -hmm. man Alice. So I think we've got some more questions for the ladies oh, and gents. We okay. do, my darlings, my darlings. Right, Jenny, do you Jenny know, Roper, hold on. There will be one in a minute. <gasps> An egg white. She's wondering why I've got no egg whites in my cup. I know. Just, you've got the queen of the egg whites. And Joe, don't you worry. It'll be that. It'll be up, Jenny Roper. It's coming. There it is, all ready to whisk. There she goes. <laughs> Joe, I think your question won, my darling. Oh, am I? Am I? Is I it me? So. Right then. Um, as you know, mm. Julius Caesar had a very famous quote about going places and conquering stuff. We nicked it. Yeah. Our quote is, Benny... Biddy, bibby. And there it is on our wonderful tea towel that you can get online if you fancy one of those to do your drying up with. Benny, Biddy, bibby. What does it mean? And it doesn't mean conquer, obviously, because we've changed it. <laughs> we did. What does it mean? What does it mean? And just while we're at it, of course, we were talking about London dries and all the rest of it. The reason why Roman fruit is not a London dry is because it has the fruit added to it after it after it starts life as London dry. So all of our after gins, distillation. Well, I was just yeah. dumbing down, really. So after distillation, yeah, after distillation, darling, it start everything starts life like this as a London dry, and then we do stuff to it, basically. So we, what we've done with this is we've added some fruit, but what haven't we added, Joe? Really important. Sugar. No sugar. It's practically one of your five a day, to be quite I, honest. I would actually say it's five of your five a day. There's at least yeah, five well, if items you have of fruit. Five in there. It is. Right, is it me? No, it's, it's me, you. it's me, it's me. <laughs> All right, so carrying on with our Roman theme for Roman fruit, I would like to know, what was it a, an offence to be in charge of whilst drunk in Roman times? So was it an offence to be drunk in charge of some gladiators? Was it an offence to be drunk in charge of some baths? And I believe that is actually the Roman baths at Bath. Um, and Or was it an offence to be drunk in charge of a chariot? So it's quite hard to say once I'm now down my second gin. But was it an offence in charge of gladiators, in charge of the Roman baths, or in charge of a chariot? Which one, I wonder? Or the Pope. Or the Pope. Or the Pope, mayhaps. You wouldn't mayhaps. want to be drunk in charge of the Pope. You might get yourself into real bother. Right then, question three. You might three. indeed. All Go stills on. have to have a name. It's a, it's a legal requirement. Mm. Now, we have this fabulous, beautiful, big still um here at york gin there's emma one of our directors standing next to it what a great picture now what is our still called it's the roman name for york because we're obviously doing roman fruits we're doing a bit of a roman round is it Jorvik? is it yorkie mm -hmm. or is it Ybor? Hmm. Well, i will leave that one with you which we'll one is that one with you and of course my favorite round i love these pictures <laughs> These I like pictures. Giles. I like Giles Scott's answer. What I did he say? I haven't got my specs on, obviously. In those days, probably. Actually, what did he say? He thinks it might be pot, but I'm just yeah. Oh. No, I, they were they were they were 
prone to every kind of vice. So probably well, they were. Um, but in all fairness, the Romans were quite naughty, as we'll find out in a bit later. But yes, I, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Okay, so Joe is infinitely improving this particular masterpiece. <gasps> what? Masterpiece. I'm sorry about pinging my mic there. What ping. masterpiece? I, I went to ping. ping. <laughs> I pinged. I think I was a bit loud. Uh, my what is she Ooh. infinitely improving? There she that's, is. That's me at the VA. Never go anywhere without a bottle of Roman fruit. <laughs> and a copper glass. That's something handbag you've got, Joe. Yeah. Is it one of your, one of your specials? Is that one of one of your really good handbags? <laughs> always, big, always big enough to get a few bits in. You never know what you might find. It's like, it's like your Mary Poppins bag, isn't it? Everything comes <laughs> out. <laughs> and I think the, right, last, no, another... the last question is for you, my lovely. It is. So uh, there's another very, very famous piece of art here. Um, who is this lovely lady who's about to have a little tot of Roman fruit herself? She looks like she's smiling just because of it. That's a very enigmatic smile. Now, everyone should know this. I'm not being funny. So what I'd really like is Ooh. actually her other name. What's her other name? <clears throat> oh, you're, you're such a taskmaster. You're oh, very, no. very hard. I know. She's called that. But she's also called La Something. Well, I'd like the last something oh, of, uh, tonight, please. Thank you very much. You're very, very you're fussy this evening. Very <laughs> fussy this evening. All right, okay. Right now, I now. think it's time we went back to the top and we found out some answers. And it's so, you, my darling. Oh, it's me. And, of course, it's I came, I saw, I had a bit of gin. Yeah. I came, I saw, I drank. Well, the Romans <laughs> were well known for being um, keen on a drink, shall we say. And if you were posh... <laughs> You were more likely to be hugely drunk. And if you were poor, you were probably less drunk because they had to um, water it down. But the, the, the posh folk didn't need to water it down because they could afford lots. So they were more likely to be very, very drunk. Um, we're talking Caligula, Claudius, Nero, and somebody I have to confess I don't know is Galba, who is apparently a bit of a gad about town as well. And all these people cause absolute havoc. So they probably had a few before they were causing havoc. So yes, there we go. Okay, my story. Somebody will like put us right. But somebody what were they not right, about? Joe. Uh, you what, darling? I said somebody will put us right. They'll tell us who Galba is. It's just our our ignorance, I would say. So who, what are you not allowed to be drunk in charge of? Apart yes, from Rome. Uh, no, it's a chariot, of course. It's a chariot. And there's our little slogan. It says, don't drink and drive. That horse looks very... <laughs> very unhappy by his master who is then riding his chariot. Now, this chariot rule, we've read about it. We're definitely claiming it. We can't 100% verify it, to be honest. But we've spoken to many, many historians, including the very lovely Mary Beard. And she said, you know what? I think you're right. I think you're right. That is a proper, proper rule. Uh, but who famously did something very rude, Joe? Who... Um, couldn't keep it down, as it were. Ooh, that sounds quite rude. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> extraordinary. I mean, he's well known as an uh, orator. Orator? Oh, orator. <laughs> he's very well known for giving good speeches. Okay. But he apparently baffed over his crowd once. It was Mark Antony, apparently let rip over an entire crowd. And I, I don't suppose he drew much of a crowd the next time I was giving a speech. They all went, oh, don't go to the front, mate. You're going to get covered. I wouldn't have it. <gasps> Deary me. Oh, I don't know. I'd like deary, to say we've all been there, but actually, keep it in. Be a lady. Keep, keep it in. in. Or, or pop to the vomitarium in. before you come out. The vomitarium. <laughs> there was one. That's what they had. They used to have them at feasts. They had their pops to the vomitarium so they could stuff more food down. It was shocking. Okay. That sounds a bit bulimic, actually, to be honest. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Where is that? Everyone go. <laughs> right, so a couple of weeks ago, we had Mad Alice came on the show. And obviously, she had a classic York Roman story to tell us. Now, I'm not going to pretend to tell it like she does, but I am going to give you a little highlight, in case you missed that one, about what she was talking about. So she was talking about a beautiful place called the Treasurer's House. Now, this is in York. It's right next to the Minster. And it was a guy called Harry Martindale who was working in the basement of the Treasurer's House. And he was working away like a good worker. And uh, he looked up because he sort of felt a presence. And he saw some Roman soldiers walking across the room. But do you know what? He couldn't see below the knee. There was nothing below the knee present. And he said, in my best Yorkshire accent, 
I'll just pull myself up for it. Hey, Virgo. I don't know about ghosts. Not right enough. You know, I've never seen one. I've never seen a ghost before that day. And you know, I've never seen one since. But I do know what I saw that day in the cellar. Or in the cellar. <laughs> now, we know what Harry saw. But we do. You know what the interesting thing is? The treasurer's house sits actually above a Roman road, but the cellars are only part excavated and the actual Roman road sits underneath, about, freakily, knee level underneath. So there was no way they were going to see the feet because the Romans were walking on the actual road underneath. Mad Alice, thank you. Thank you for sharing that tale with us. I'm sorry I, di I didn't even do it justice, darling, but... Thank uh, you for sharing that tale. Did you know, I know. I did. I thought I did all right. I, mean, I, was, I, no. I was nodding. I was nodding. <laughs> no, I was actually thinking that people should probably go and have a look at last week so they can watch Madame is doing it. You can go and get it on um, YouTube, can't you? You can. The week before last, darling, I think. So, oh, yes. before. But she's also got an, um, an exclusive bit of video from the same from the same place where a visitor was taking a video of herself in the mirror and this blooming ghost... Largest oh. life goes along behind us. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Right. right then. On we go, Jojo. Okie dokie. So our still is called Ebor, yes. which is short for Eborakum. Um, we've actually got two other smaller stills which we make our prototypes in, um, and they're called um, John and Julie, which are um, named after two of our uh, first directors at Yorkshire. And so, yes, in their honour, John and Julie. But this big one here is oh, Ebor. Ebor for short. So, yes. Ebor. Ebor. Absolutely. Ebor. Gum, it's good. Ebor, Ackham, it's good. Do you know what? I have to tell you, Joe, this fizz has gone straight to my head. <laughs> so what are you like? like you know, Mad Madeline, that is so funny because actually I don't think Susanna's cut her fringe today, but I cut mine. I cut I, I did cut mine today. <laughs> oh, I did cut my fringe today. Ah, we've both Somebody had noticed. a black market. We've both, both had a black market cut. Right then, uh, honestly, I'm so rubbish. I've never had to cut my own fringe in my entire life. So I'm doing it really gingerly, maybe too gingerly. Maybe and ginger I Tommy. Maybe Ginger Tommy. If Ginger Tom was here, I would let him cut my fringe, but he's not. Yeah, well, we're having so one of those bits, so. Anyway, it's over to you for the next answer. It is, it is. So, Jo, there she was in front of the shell. Who was she? She was, of course, representing the birth of Venus. Look at her. In fact, Jo and your bottle of Roman fruit look much better than that. Now, this is an icon, here we go, of the Italian Renaissance or Renaissance or however we're going to pronounce it. <laughs> now, it is thought to have been commissioned by the very wealthy and awfully naughty Medici family. They were very naughty people. And it they portrays a naughty. typical scene in Greek mythology. Now, on the left of that lovely picture, we've got Zephyr, the wind god, blowing, blowing her to land. And greeting her is, of course, the aura of spring. Aura, Jo, tell us what she's called. She's called Primavera. Primavera, like the pasta. You know the vegetarian pasta you get in Italian <laughs> restaurants? It's called pasta primavera. Well, it means, it means spring, so. Yeah, all right. It means it's spring. <laughs> so she's one of three auras, and she is welcoming her, beckoning her onto land. Yeah. Over to oh, you. <laughs> Righty-ho. So here we go. Everybody knows who this is. If you don't, you've been living in a Chinaman's pipe. It's that, the oh, that, that by that Leonardo again. da Vinci. And I was looking for La Gioconda. Yeah, La Gioconda. So got it. Jackie got it right, so well done, Jax. Um, this, this fabulous painting was actually mm. not all that famous until she was pinched. She was oh. taken by a workman who'd been brought in to um, create some toughened glass for some of the better paintings mm. in the Louvre. And he decided one night that he was going to have her away. So he did. Well, he went to the he locked himself in a broom cupboard until the place had shut, stuffed it down his overalls, and off he went with her. She was actually missing for two years. And during that time, bearing in mind there was no internet, no mobile phones, no telly, actually, 1911. Um, wasn't telly in 1911, was there? No. no. And so he basically looking at newspapers and whatnot, um, and she became the heart the heartthrob of the world in that time when she was missing. And when she was returned, everybody rejoiced. She's got her own post box in the Louvre. People sent her letters and flowers. 
did you not tell us a really fab thing earlier today about this picture? And you showed us another picture. Oh, yeah. Some people think this is actually more or less a self-portrait of, of the painter. Look, I'm not being funny, but oh. actually, that is cool. It looks like the Mona Lisa a little bit older, doesn't it? It did. Think? It looked like some Mona Lisa's granny. Yeah. <laughs> the moaning Lisa. Yeah, as Bonnie Harrison said, the moaning old gal. Yeah, the moaning so. old gal. That just about sums it up. Now, thankfully, that has brought us to the end of a Roman fruit. And, well, not thankfully, because it's yummy and I've enjoyed it very much. It's gone straight to my head. As you may be able to tell us, I'm slurring my words even more than I was right at the beginning, completely sober. Um, so we're going. We're going, we're going on an exciting journey next. We are going to Grey Lady. Now, Joe, I just have to tell you, we are wittering on quite a lot. We might oh. have to skip through. Otherwise, Thanks. we're gonna have to be we're gonna be here till well, we won't be. We'll be here probably till about ten past seven, quarter past seven, maybe if, depending on how much we witter on. Bear with us. Excuse people. me, who's who's what? wittering? Just saying. Oh, it's always me. It's always me. So the good news <laughs> is you're wittering now. I am wittering. I'll get on with it. I'll get on with it. I'm like, Right, okay, the good news is I'm making the gin from the box. So I have yet another copper glass which holds more than a pint. What a complete result. So in there, I'm going to put a lot of ice. Now I've got a wet hand. Right, I'll just dry my little handy pandy. There we go. Then I'm going to take my grey lady. As we know, I would free pour, but I'm being very good for you all, okay? In there, a very generous double. Pluck, pluck, pluck. I love the sound. I've just spilt it, so I'll just add a bit more. There you go. So I love the sound of that. So in there, I'm just going to, do you know what? I'm going to keep it super simple, and I'm going to add some refreshingly light tonic. There we go. Now, the beauty of Grey Lady, she's really subtle. She's really delicate. In there, you've got, you have got some uh, added citrus. So that's the bergamot. A little bit of Earl Grey tea in there. So it's got... But it's super subtle. And you've also got blue pea. I'm going to have to hold it up. I'm sorry. I'm going to hold it up here. Can you see the colour of this? It's like... Yeah. An, oh, there we go. It's got this bluey... It's really beautiful. And it's it a is. subtle it's, like, it's mercurial, isn't it? Oh, look at you with your posh. Yeah, words. you see me with fancy is, words. It is. So I've got my gin. I've got my tonic. What am I going to put with it? I am going to put... Because of the added citrus. Look at that. That doesn't look... Like, well, it is actually dried lemon peel. And that, once I put it in the drink, there it goes. And I'm going to give it a little whoosh. Oh, I've used the wrong one because I need that for later. So I'm going to have to, there you go. I'll leave that one instead. I lay, I lay these out so beautifully at the start of the performance. Right, here we go. So there we've got a classic gin and tonic, but with Grey Lady. And it's going to be gorgeous. I'm going to steal my straw out of that one. There we go. I think Tony Rope has taken the mickey out of me for saying mercurial. Mercurial. That's a posh word. Joe, it's I was really glad. Mercurial. It's mercurial. silver and it goes like that. What more do you want? I reckon that's mercurial. Take right, I am going to... You know, it's lightning. It's now lightning. So if we get a power cut, people, and I leave you, I'm very sorry. So... Don't worry, you'll still have me. Mm. <laughs> it's thunder and lightning. Very, very frightening now. Right, I'm going to make a clover leaf. So I'm going to use... Of course the... you are. Of course I am. So I'm going to use, where am I? I've gone all fiddly diddly. Right, Grey Lady, of course, starting with a nice big double shot of Grey Lady. And that's going to go over my lemon juice. Well, actually, I'm going to use lime juice, if that's all right with you. You can use lemon or lime. And Ooh. two teaspoons of grenadine. Mm -hmm. Did you bring that back from Ibiza, Joe? I brought that back from Ibiza <laughs> right now. <laughs> And uh, an egg white. I'm just giving that a whip up. And then you top it off with a sprig of mint. Now, I'm actually going to serve this in my lovely uh, teacup. Oh, get you. On my birthday, because I think it looks like it ought to be served in a teacup. Because look at the colour of that. It's really lovely. It's sort of pink and pink and ladylike and gorgeous. I'm going to put lots of ice in. Nice. In my little ice bag there. Oh, lots of He's ice. You're so posh. I'm so posh. And then I'm going to add my egg white. Go on then. In it goes. Oh, I do love an egg white. I can't help myself. And it's zero Weight Watchers points as an egg white. So, well, of so course. Me. Most of, yeah. 
And now we're going to give it a little stir up with a very long spoon. Oh, with a very long one. You like a long one, though, don't you? I do. Like... <laughs> we're getting back to Renaissance times. Renaissance. <laughs> Cheers, darling. Oh, that's the best one yet. I love that. That is oh, just lovely, lovely, look lovely. You. Look at you. Okay. Will you tell us, Joe, while you're there, will you just tell us a bit about the history of uh, the Grey Lady? Tell us what it, what it, what's it all about. Why did we make it? Well, Grey Lady was actually a, a limited edition we made for York Theatre Royal because they were celebrating, was it 275 years? I'm a bit blind. Uh, yeah, 275 years. It's one of the oldest theatres in Britain, actually, is, is our lovely York Theatre Royal. And the story goes, it's quite sad. It's um, she, The, the, the theatre is actually built on the site of an old hospital, um, which was run by nuns. They're never, a good, they're never good news, are they, nuns, to be mm -hmm. honest with you? Um, and the, one of the poor sisters had fallen in love with a uh, gentleman from town and had got herself pregnant. Now, the oh. mother superior took a very dim view of this and actually bricked her up alive, which oh, is really horrible. But she's actually been seen loads and loads of times. And she's apparently a very, very nice spirit, a very benevolent um, and kind feeling spirit. And she always appears um, <laughs> if the dress rehearsal has been spectacular and it looks like it's going to be a really good show they, so everybody wants to see her let's be honest if you're putting on a show at york theater royal you would really be pleased to see the lovely gray lady so that's where she originated and that's oh, where like we started making it for them but it was so popular we actually make it as part of our stable now nice yeah. nice work so in honor of the gray lady and our theatrical heritage we heritage what does that mean so we decided what we would do is we would ask some more culture questions now those of us that have been with us before know we've had a whole evening of culture so we are going to continue so here we go you're ready for this oh, what i would like to know is these are a couple of questions on dickens we've had before so in response to being told his sausages were moldy who said shut up and drink your gin which dickens character said that who said shut up and drink your gin we all Please, sir, there. can I have some more in my pint? No, no, I think I'm looking about five there. It's quite I bizarre. Look at you. It's a great picture. I love that. A bit well, better than my one. Look at me. Go I'm on, like, up you go. This is me and Mrs. Gamp. This is what my family calls me because I've always got a gin in my hand around the house. Now, Mrs. Gamp is happy to cure anyone for the price of a gin or two. But which book is this old baggage appearing in? Is it Martin Chuzzlewit? Great Expectations or Bleak House? Mm -hmm. Which of those three novels by Dickens does Mrs. Gamp appear? Ooh, I'm not Ooh. sure. Do you know what? I actually don't know that one. But there you go. You'll, you will you will tell us later. It is thundering and lightning very, very hard. So interesting. Is that we will... funny here? Is that funny? Because you're literally just up the road and it's I know. sunny here. It, no, it is proper, proper, proper scary weather now. Okay. Here we've got the next question. We have a daughter of York, of course. It is Dame Judy Dench. Now, she's known for all sorts of things and marvellous acting, but she's also patron of a charity. And I would like to know which charity is she the patron of? Is she the patron of Greyhounds in Need or otherwise known as Gin? Is she the patron of Ice, Impala's Counter Extinction? Or is she the patron of Tonic? Tortoises on narcotics in chaos. Mmm. Oh, no, please let it be the tortoises. Those blooming pesky tortoises, they're always in chaos. What is it about tortoises? What's going on with them? Too many narcotics, clearly. Far too right, many. Then. Far question. too many. On to you, my darling. Far too many. Now, who is this gin-loving superstar? Uh, I, just, I would like to... You, you'll recognise him, I'm sure. And his husband, so a bonus... Bonus point for the lovely husband's name. That wig, by the way, was three feet tall, not counting the galleon. Now, it was for his 50th birthday party. He was dressed up as Louis XIV. What a great costume is that. Anyway, he loves his gin and tonic. And he loved his husband, too. So there we are. Well, he loves his husband. Who is it? So, it is now absolutely throwing it down here at my house. Um, I can hear it. If I lose you, I'm going to pick up my microphone, actually. If I lose you, I will attempt to come back. If we get a power cut, I will go. I will carry on regardless until such times as you lose me. But here we go. So, of course, we've got another picture for you. Who painted this extraordinary piece, which is obviously much better for a bottle of Grey Lady? 
That's as simple as that. Who painted this extraordinary piece? And I have to say, that grey lady looks like it should always be there. <laughs> Go on, Jo. I'm just, just laughing. I'm just laughing at Dave Smith. Oh my God! Answer. It's like a monsoon now. This is extraordinary. So, really can you actually hear, hear me? Hear, I don't I even know where the cat. I can hear it raining on you. Okay, I think I think you may lose me very soon, but. Let's go back to the answers while we can. <laughs> I was just laughing at Dave Smith's answer. who said it was when, when, when you can't hear me. She, but she, the mother superior said, I can't hear you because the you... rain. You carry on, darling. Right then, if you be quiet, I can talk. <laughs> it's me, it's me. Question one, let's go back to the top. Oh, this is hilarious. This is, this is the Dunkirk spirit going on and on. So we talked about Oliver at the beginning and we said, who said, shut up and drink your gin? It was, of course, Fagin, it was, and there's now hailstones the size of ice cubes coming down. It is, shut up and drink your gin, said Fagin from Oliver Twist. Now, this is a beautiful picture of our children, because we, we actually love to get a picture of our kids in, to be honest. So in the middle there, as Fagin, is my son Joshua. Uh, this is a few years ago. Joshua is now 24, and he was about, oh, I want to say about, I want to say about 14 or 15 here. And on the left there, wearing the top hat, is Joe's son, Sam, who is now 21. So this is actually quite an old photo. This is when they did Oliver at school. Um, and we're proud mummies, so we like to get a picture of our kids in. Joe, over to you. <laughs> it's like... Okie dokie. So the answer to this was, a, was actually Martin Chuzzlewit. Mrs. Gamp was the worst kind of backstreet quack that Charles Dickens absolutely loathed. He thought they were the most base of human beings and she would go around pretending she could cure illnesses which she couldn't but she'd be she'd be happy to uh, pretend to cure you as long as you had a large amount of gin for her to go away with and there she is carrying her black umbrella which as you may know is a nickname for a, a big brolly like that it's called a gamp so there we are mrs gamp from martin chuzzlewit I think she probably told you all about Mrs. Gap then, but I couldn't hear her because of the hailstones. So <laughs> no, I was talking can't... about you. Oh, <laughs> I hope it was all good or all bad. I hope it was all bad. So anyway, I will carry on regardless in this incredible weather I'm in. The cats have even woken up, for goodness sake. It must be bad. Oh, bless so we, next question is about our beautiful daughter of York, and it is, of course, Dame Judy Dench. But... What I'd like to know is which charity, I know I'm like, I'm like hunkering down now, I'm going lower and lower. Uh, which charity was she the patron or still is the patron of? It is, of course, the, no, it's not the tortoises with the narcotics. Oh, it is, it I know, I'm been. really sorry about that. It is actually greyhounds in need. And there she is drinking her Dame Judy Quench beer from Brew, our friends at Brew York. If you saw the Graham Norton show, you would have seen her having a little sip of that. Uh, we want her to try our beer, which is called Juniper from Brass Castle, another York base or another Yorkshire based distillery and uh, distillery brewers, I suppose we call them. Um, yes, uh, she's I don't know whether she likes a beer, to be honest, but she looks like she's quite enjoying oh, it. She, she looks like she it. might be liking it. I think she'd enjoy a Juniper better, to be honest. Yeah. Let's give her one yeah. of those. On to the next question, darling. Especially if she was in Poussoir's. Ah, now it's coming up later. Right, okay, so this was, of course, Elton John, or as he was first known, Reg Dwight, and his lovely husband, David Furnish. Now, he started out life at the Northwood Hills pub, which is where York, uh, York Gin director Emma Godivala comes from. And I've been in there many a time visiting my sister, and well, sadly, not with Elton John in there, he'd gone gone on to better things but yeah he did love a gin and tonic he used to what are you doing <laughs> it, it, honestly it's like being in a war zone here i've never <laughs> seen hailstones this size it's really scary i'm amazed i'm still here but carry on i'll join in when i can carry on regardless your gin needs you <laughs> anyway yes well, well, let, well let's just cut let's just move along then in case we get rid of get rid of it. <laughs> anyway Yell and John liked a gin and tonic. Take it from me. There is a story there, but we're moving on. Is it my turn? It's yes, your turn. it's Salvador Dali, of course. It is the persistence of memory. This is the 1931 painting that Salvador Dali did. And it is one of the most recognisable pieces of surrealism. First shown in 1932, but since 1934, it has been in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. I feel like I'm on sort of weird bus tour now because I'm actually having to talk into my microphone. I can't hear a thing because of the noise of the oh, hail. Oh, like, oh, 
Hey. I'm, but hey, I'm still here. What do I care? No, no. I'm still standing after yeah. all. Oh, back to Elton John, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, you see, I like... I like a bit of a circular thing, you know. I like to like to cross reference. Yes, I will. Oh my god, we love. Oh, it has just stopped. So I'll put it down. You tell me We're if you can hear me, people. So. Right. We love a crossroad. We are going to move on. We're going to move on because we are running fast out of time. But we are going to yes. move on to old Tom, one of our favourites. Always, Joe, make a cocktail. Oh, I'm going to make the one out of the box, which is called the ginger tom. So very, 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 very simple. Um, put like lots of ice in your Collins glass. And add a nice, well, um, you double slug from the box. So that's a nice double old tom. And you just top it up with fever tree ginger ale. Absolutely gorgeous. Now I quite like a long drink, so I'm going to put most of it in there. Uh, and then you, well, you can garnish it with whatever you like, to be honest. It's usually mint, but um, you can also put lemon or orange or anything you like. So I'm going to put mint because that's the traditional one. Uh, and I'm going to say cheers. Oh, actually, cheers. I've forgotten. There's actually a lovely um, garnish bag that comes oh. with this as well. You wouldn't, yes, you normally would put mint, but this will be even nicer with the cinnamon sticks that, well, oh, sorry, that come with the kit. So I'm popping that in as well. I'm giving it a swish around to really some of the cinnamon. Here we go. Nice, nice work, Joe. Mm, yum, yes, yum. nice work if you can get it. Yes, absolutely. So, so it has stopped hailing, ladies and gentlemen. You will be happy to hear it is still thundering and lightning, but we will carry on regardless. Now, the good news is you know, uh, you know where it's gone. You know where it's gone, Suzanne. You've sent it over to Andrea in Melbourne. Oh, Andrea, I'm really sorry, but yeah, that would be obvious because you are the next village. So <laughs> I'm really sorry about that. It was pretty scary for a while, and I've now got my entire patio, which I can see out of my lovely windows is actually covered in ice which is quite extraordinary we're in june people <laughs> That's and, I know. and last week i was outside I, I hesitate to say bikini it was not a bikini you were outside breaking champagne glasses weren't you yeah i was i was because that's one of my favorite things to do clearly so so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use our old tom to make uh the actual one of my actual favorites now this we did with mad alice so this is called a forks firework and it's using old tom so what i've got is i've got our collins glass and i've filled it already full of ice i'm going to pop that on my tray so you can see it i'm yeah. going to take our old tom there old he is, top, right there he is. and angie skillbeck a ginger gin and ginger is young i can tell you it's young yeah, no, gin and ginger is the way forward. So, of course, a great big measure. I'm going to make this one in the glass rather than any tin or anything. So we're just going to chuck it straight in. So, you know, I feel like I need a double-double, but there we go. That, that's fine. We're going pace to that yourself. In there. Pace yourself, girl. I will pace myself. Ooh, I Stephen, am going to I'm, just going to tell, I'm just going to tell Stephen Broughton that you can get these online if you want one. You can. You can. He's just and admiring actually, our pinning. Stephen, you just hang on a minute because we've got a great offer for you right at the end. So just stay Ooh. stay where you are and we'll tell you about it. I've just popped some lemon juice in there. The next thing I'm going to add, a secret ingredient, some salted caramel or just some general fudgy or toffee type sauce. But salted caramel for me, in it goes. Oh, my God. That's like my hips will never recover from that. There we go. <laughs> so I'm going to use I'm going to use my straw, which I've probably stolen out somewhere else. And I'm going to put some apple juice in there. Oh, I've just spilt it everywhere. That's okay. Look at that. And then I was super fancy earlier, and I made these. I made these really flash apple wheels. You probably can't Ooh. see that. But I did. But I'm going to stick Ooh. it on the side of my glass like that. That looks and that amazing. Is a super fancy apple wheel. Now the good news is the sun has come out. Hurrah. Only well, in you, only well, New York, people. So there we yeah, go. You Cheers. You've sent, sent it over to my friend Sandy Vaughan. She's got all your hail and thunder in Spencer now. So it's obviously oh. going that way. It's going up oh. north to York. It, do you know what? My So I've got, in, in my kitchen, I've got like a kitchen gardeny room thing, and I've got these big roof lights. They're covered in ice. Everything is covered in ice. It's like October. It's quite extraordinary. Yes. Now, oh, and Angie Skillback suggests you might just go and get your ice off the patio. And yes, we, Alicia, we agree. Forks firework. Nom, 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 nom. That, this was the rock on which I perished. Yeah, well, ago. let's. If we can blame Mad Alice. I think it's her fault. It's definitely Mad Alice's fault. But we need to move on because, in we all do. honesty, we are super running behind time, darling. So, 
Okay, okay so we're Joe, talking about tell, us, old... tell us about Old Tom. Well, Old Tom is um, yeah. it's a London dry, but with mm -hmm. stuff added to it. And ours is actually made for us by a Michelin star chef in Hiram. Mm -hmm. He's called Andrew Pern. There he is with his puss. Hurrah. Oh, here's Old Tom. And there's Emma. Look, with the. I, I think that must be the chef and Andrew. I think it is. Yeah. So um, oh. it's got star anise, pink peppercorns, angelica, and bronze fennel in it. And it's the most mm. beautiful, fresh tasting gin you'd ever want to find. It's one Don't million sizes. I'm not even going to put it up there. my oh, there's your first. There's my old Tom with with old Tom and Grey Lady look. And I think we're going to get his cousin, Paris, in a minute. There. Oh, there's oh, Paris. Paris. Boy. That's, yeah, Count, yeah. that's Count Paris of Verona there. Look at Count him. Paris looking beautiful. Yeah. Well, um, and old Tom is often referred to. Sorry. I was going to say oh, something. Oh, there you go. Link, isn't it? Ooh, between it certainly Denver's is. And somewhere between Geneva's and mm. uh, London Dry. So mm. it's sweeter than the one and drier than the other. So, yeah. Exactly. Well said. It's yeah, it's exactly. So let's move on to these questions. I'm conscious, darlings, that we are going to run till about 10 past ish. So please uh, stay yeah, with well, us. If so, you have to, don't worry. But if you can stay, then do. Stay, stay with us. So the good news is we've got questions now. So, Hogarth's famous picture, Gin Lane, 1751. Most people know it. There's been a fantastic one recently with our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, playing a leading role in this. But what <laughs> I would like to know is, what is the name of its opposite picture? It was drawn as part of a pair. What, what is the other one called? What? That's as simple as that. Go on, Joe. over to you, my darling. Okie okay, dokie. So this is my favourite. Um, we have this quite regularly in the quiz, because we can't resist it, really. What is it for and how did it work? This is called a Puss and Mew. What was it for and how did it work? Mm. Okay. Now, the next question. We haven't had since week one. Can you believe that? We're on like week, something like 11 or 10. I can't 12, remember what week we're on. 12. Never? Oh my goodness. So what I would like to know is, what is the name of the York Gin Cat that you see on everything? What is his name? Look at him looking slightly sideways, looking at us. You can yeah. tell I like these cocktails because I've nearly finished it already. Mm. Okay, and we're sticking with Puscats for the next question. Mm. If you see, this is Gus, the theatre cat, and he will tell you tales of his lovely theatre life for a thimble full of gin. What is the name of the musical? Mm. And there is our lovely Joe. Joe, we hope you're watching this evening. We've had yes. you on several times before. Please come and watch us. And the lovely so, Alex Mather, of course, who oh. works for in and Pick Me Up Theatre. So there's a double connection there. There's a double connection. We love Alex. Hi, Alex, if you're there. So leading on from that question, now think about this, people, because it is directly leading on from this question. Who said, when asked about his inspiration, gin and drugs, dear lady, gin and drugs? Hmm. Over to you, my lovely. Okie dokie. Right then. This is a very, very famous poster that I'm sure you'll have seen many times in your life. Now, which which uh, famous club in Paris is this cat a poster mm. for? And who was the artist? Now, I actually lived in Paris and Toulouse, and it's not who I thought, and I have thought many years about this artist being who it was not. So mm. I hope you know better than me. I need to put my apple down now. What are you doing? You're eating your apple. I'm eating my apple. I'll just put my apple down. Put Hello, apple Tim. Thanks for joining us this evening. Right. So that was the end of the round. Let's go back. So I asked you about Gin Lane and I said, what was its partner called? Well, that's super easy because it's actually called Beer Street. And there's a really good reason why it's called Beer Street. So Gin Lane was actually a picture that depicted everything that wasn't great. So you've got, you know, you've got a sort of drunk woman at the front chucking her baby Boris over the side there. Um, and it was trying to show the evils of gin. So that gin was not a good thing because back then gin was not a good thing. It was actually going to kill you. The water was going to kill you that made the gin. They made it in their bathtubs. They put all sorts of horrendous things in it and it was properly going to kill you. So they came up with Beer Street. Now, Beer Street, is basically showing you, it's just the other side of the street. If you look at the pawnbrokers at the, pawn at the top, uh, it's just trying to show you everything that is good about beer. Now, you're there, you've got some lovely fat people who are very healthy and fat and jolly, 
Well, that's all very well. But actually, the water that made the beer was probably going to kill you as well. But that's not what the government of the day wanted you to know. They wanted you to think that gin was bad and beer was good. Hmm, there you go. That's your history lesson for today. So, Jojo, tell us about this lovely thing. It was probably quite true, actually. Well, um, yeah. probably moving on straight away from that, actually, because they mm -hmm. did try to curtail people's um, imbibing of said gin. And so they introduced the Gin Act of 1736, which stopped small distillers from selling gin. So one in four habitable places in London sold gin at the time. Can you imagine that? One in four. Mm. So the Puss and Mew is actually the world's mm. first vending machine. You pop a coin in the mouth and out pop gin. And what it was, um, it was the invention of a very, very canny bloke called Captain Dudley Bradstreet. In fact, the Puss in Mew is also known as Bradstreet's Cat. Um, so he got himself a copy of this gin act and he read through it several times and eventually realised if he could not be seen, he could not be prosecuted. So mm. what he did, he made himself a massive sign. Well, he didn't make it. He got himself, he commissioned a massive cat uh, sign and stuck it outside mm. his house and made it known about the streets that if people wanted a small amount of gin, they could come to the puss and go, puss, puss, have you any gin? And he would go, mew, mew, mew. mew, mew, so, mew. Pop, so they'd pop their penny in, and out would come the gin. So, yes, very, very clever. Very, the world's very first good. machine, very, very popular. His neighbours couldn't get into the street. It was so popular. So, yeah, there we go. That's well done, is. Captain Dudley Bradstreet. Which brings us on very neatly to our other puss puss, and his name is Rutterkin. York Gin followers, you will know this. Here's Rutterkin with his family, the Bottisford witches. They were naughty people because they were accused of witchcraft and they were accused of bewitching only the Earl of York and his family. Oof. I cannot quite believe it. Oh, you know what? Like all witches, I'm afraid Rutterkin came to a bit of a sticky end. But luckily, here at York Gin, we love pussycats. What we do is that if you come into our shop and you want any of our empty bottles, and they're really popular because they're so chunky and they're really good. They're great with bottle lights and they're great with candles, all sorts of things. We will give you our empty bottles. If you just put a little tiny donation in our, our black cat, which is for the, straight for the cat's protection, it goes straight to them. Also, if you take a rescue cat from the cat's protection, we give you a little welcome bottle of gin to say welcome because your puss is part of your family. Yes, indeed. And moving swiftly on to yet more cats, because that is the name, of course, of the musical. Oh, of course it is. And there's the lovely Alex May that we were talking about earlier, who was the other cat in the picture, but that's her out of her costume. So, yay. Cats, the musical, written by, well, Andrew Lloyd Webber for the musical, but... Oh. But, of course... Elliot for of the book. Course. It was T.S. Elliot that said that. Gin and drugs, my dear. Gin and drugs. Now... I kind of sort of understand that. Have you seen the film, Cats? Oh, don't get me started. Well, let's talk about Judy Dench's teeth. No, let's not. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I liked Victoria. I liked Victoria, the little white cat at the bottom. I thought she was good. Judy Dench's teeth were really fussing. Why is that? The whole thing was just like... Uh, on those look like they've been on drugs frankly and it's like no thanks i saw it once yeah and i shall never see it again uh, no. but they are it's no on sky. they are they are oh. flogging it big time on sky i'm, I'm not oh, biting I'm i did go and see it and i did sort of enjoy it i love to see cats i've seen it live gazillions of times and i really liked it and but I don't yeah. know what they did with the film, people. It just wasn't for us. No, they? it's not for me. I like the show, but don't like the film. The film's exactly. Gone. Anyway, last still one, my darling. Do with the cats. Carol Weaver. I didn't know this one, so it's up for grabs. I always thought it was to lose the track. I've been saying so for years, and I'm very old. Um, but it wasn't to lose the track. It was. It was actually um, a Swiss guy called Theophil Steinmann who painted this picture, and it was, of course, for Le Chat Noir. The, um, the club was called Le Chat Noir. Um, Toulouse Trek did go there, so they knew each other, and actually Toulouse Trek did start doing a lot of posters mm. after this, but they were subsequent to Steinman, so he, he led the way there. It wasn't a Toulouse Trek poster at all, so I've been wrong all these years. And looking at Google, lots of other people have been too, but there we go. No, who knew? But we've all got, I think even I've got a poster of that one, actually, to be honest. I think I bought yeah, it. No, I've got it. Got it on a tray and all sorts. It's lovely. I know, but it's, it's a not really a beautiful picture. Track. So we've got one more gin left. It's the bad boy. It is the gin of gins. 
It is, of course. Outlaw. Outlaw. Oh, I've just got to go and get some more ice while you're doing you that. You go get some more ice and I'll tell us lice or ice even. And I'll tell us about it. Now, the good news is Outlaw is a navy strength gin. It's 57% of loveliness. It's double distilled. The second time through, we add more juniper and more black pepper. It is it packs the push. I always say in the shop, if you come and see us in the shop, I say that Outlaw, Outlaw, is like York Gin London Dry, older brother, who's sort of beefed up a bit. He's chunky. He's a chunky monkey, this one. All right. Now, the good news is the good directors of York Gin love a bit of a dress up. We all love a dress up. We're all quite, we're all lovies, really. Let's see them. Now, here we go. Here we have, of course, Guy Fawkes and Catesby, his, uh, his conspirator. Look at him there. I've made a Forks for a Forks's firework just for you, my darling. Look at him there. They honestly, they love this photo shoot so much. We couldn't get the costumes off them. Right, go on. Next one, my darling. Here he is. There's our Pete. That's our stand and deliver Pete. That is, of course, <laughs> Dick Turpin. Yeah, now, and he is actually delivering gin around York he, for nothing at the moment. <laughs> he is. If you live within the inner ring road of the York city <laughs> he will come and he will stand of course two meters from your front step and he will deliver it. to the best of his ability he he loves this outfit he was actually really delivering at my door great. this very day and there they are they're all there look and there's oh. emma at the back there she's mary bateman now mary bateman was known as the yorkshire poisoner um so don't accept a g and t from our emma because she might be poisoning you and mad alice <laughs> there in the middle we love mad alice come back and join us another week now the good news is the good news is if pete comes to your door he will of course be wearing that dick turpin outfit and he will be standing two meters back from your door he did today he came to my door today i know in fact, we, had a, we had a lovely email in the other day didn't we saying oh i just got my gin delivered by dick turpin it was yes yeah. <laughs> Yes, Smith. He's our very own Dick. Well done, you. Come and see Good you next time. Right. Daddy. Right, I'm going to make the one from the box, from the discovery box. So no, I'm not. It's me. One. I'm making the one from the box. Oh, you? Oh, yeah. So you are. Go on, then. Oh, yeah. It's back to me. Who knew? Right. Okay. Very quickly, because unfortunately, <laughs> the Fox's fireworks slips down awfully easily, and I love them. So let me just remember what I'm doing. Ah, okay. I'm going to just grab my cocktail shaker. I've got one mahoosive piece of ice left. In it goes. So I'm going to put in, oh, there we go. Where's my measure? Oh, I don't know why I bother measuring, to be honest. So there we go. Whee! There we go. That is a big shot of old Tom. And all I'm going to do is actually just shake that up because all I want to happen is for the ice to go, go through the gin. There we go. Uh, there's my martini glass. So this is called a pepper martini. I'm just going to pour that in. Shannon, your you, Shannon Baines is saying her her postman started dressing up as Batman. <laughs> well, why not? I love it. Shannon, Shannon is my beautiful niece. Of course, your postman is dressing as Batman. Why wouldn't he? And uh, I'm just going to put in there. I'm going to put a couple of peppercorns, black peppercorns, like that. And just because I am a simple soul, I'm just going to put a little tiny splash of fever tree soda because. Unlike Winston Churchill, I don't... You better do hurry up, it's too. five past. Oh, for God's sake, I'm going really fast now. There we go, cheers, over to you, darling. Go, 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 go. Mm, right, I'm going to make a pink gin, which is really quick, and it's in, it's in memory of Francis <coughs> who sailed around the world on his yacht, and he said that the worst day he ever had was the day the gin ran out. So here we go, nice double shot of Outlaw, in it goes, over lots and lots of ice, which I've just been to fetch, so that's good, and you chop it up very simply, with Angostura bitters, as much as you like it, to taste really. So that's very simple, pink gin. Lovely. I'm going to actually cheers. put my, cheers. I'm going to put my straight martini, my straight gin just to one side and I'll continue emptying my forks of spiral, which I've enjoyed very much. So very quickly, the first question. Tonic so, as well. Oh, oh, it's right. It's not put supposed to be straight. It's too, it's too strong like that. You've got to put your tonic in as well. All right, no worries. So. We mentioned a gin commission. If you can remember back to minute one, it's, it was like an hour ago. So if you can minute, remember back to minute one, we talked about gin commissioning kits. For almost 200 years, a newly commissioned ship was given uh, uh, by the Royal Navy a gin commissioning ship, a kit even. Oh, ship? No, no. What was in this kit? Tell us what was in the kit. 
That's it. Jojo, over to you, my darling. Okay, so who said, I like to have a martini. Mm. Two at the very most. After yeah. three, I'm under the table. And after four, I'm under my host. Shocking. Was it the wonderful Dorothy Parker, <laughs> the glamorous Marilyn Monroe, the saucy Quentin Crisp, or the mm. glamorous Mae West? Well, that is a great question. Could have been, could have, could have. Could, of course, be any of them, to be honest. Right. We don't like to let a York gin go by without mentioning James Bond. Oh, my God, have I got some great facts for you for this one. So, <laughs> James Bond, he invented the Vesper Martini, named after one of his favourite ladies. But, of course, the question is, in which film did Vesper Lind appear? And, of course, there were two of them. That might give you a little clue, Let. I would like to know which film they appeared in and have I got some facts for you for the answers. Over to you, my darling. Okay, this is another very famous picture. I'm sure you'll know who it is and who it's by. But he looks <laughs> as if he definitely needs a little tot of our outlaw there. Bless him. Of course so he does. Who's that by and what's it called? Oh, oh crikey, you went really fast there, Joe. Who there is that? And what I'm is on a roll now. <laughs> you, were, you, were, you were like super, super fast. I have to say, I think, in my humble opinion, that picture is much improved by a, a copper glass and some outlaw. Yeah, cut. I have to concur. You do. Right, back to the answers. Gosh, it feels like we're now going a million miles an hour. We will slow down marginally. Please stay with us. So, back to the answers. <laughs> the gin commissioning kit. It had two bottles of Navy Strength gin, and it also had presentation box and some lovely glassware and had york gin been around in those days they would definitely have had your oh i've got hiccups now york gin outlaw <laughs> so we were going to give you all sorts of fantabulous facts about navy strength gin and about the fact that navy uh, navy officers got paid in a tot of gin whereas the you know the regular poor people they just got a bit got of rum, rum. Oh, just so, so if you were posh in the in, in Royal Navy, you got gin, and then you ended a lime to it, which is where we get the phrase limeys, and it gives yeah. you scurvy and all sorts of wonderful things. Yeah, so scurvy, got rid of malaria, you name yeah, it, it's an all exactly. round medicinal. Medicine. I think the major th the major message there is drink more gin. Yeah, I think so. Tell us about tell us about I, who was under our host. This this lovely quote was by a very very clever. American lady called Dorothy Parker. She uh, was a writer, a critic, a satirist, and a poet. She was unbelievably <laughs> clever. Um, she actually got two Oscar nominations, but um, she was dumped by Hollywood after that because she had fairly left-wing views, and it wasn't the thing at the time. They weren't having any of it, so she didn't really get to... What are you doing? I, I was caught between <laughs> drinks there. Marginally caught between drinks. <laughs> So yes, the wonderful, fabulous Dorothy Parker, we salute you. Thank you, Daniel Craig, for this. So, of course, the answer is uh, Casino Royale. So there were two Casino Royale films. The first one, <coughs> oh, I had a little cough because I just had a massive drink. In 1953, it was the spoofy one with uh, David Niven and actually Ursula Andrews. Hold that thought, people. Of course, the better one was with Daniel Craig and Eva Green in 2006. Now... Just bear with me. You know those little tiny blue little trunklets that he came out of the sea in? Trunklets. Trunklets. <laughs> I, I think I might have made up that word. So he came out of the sea in his little trunklets. Trunklets. Trunklets, yes. He, what well, that was, of course, because Ursula Andrus, rem go back to Dr. No, when she played Honey Rider and she came out of the sea and sang a weird song, um, and had to be dubbed because her accent was too strong because that no one could understand it. Unfortunately, you know what? Can what? I tell you something? I don't what? think any, I don't think anybody on earth was listening to that song at the time. Just saying. no, because and Ursula Andrews, what a beautiful woman! Whoa, stunning! Daniel Craig in the blue trunks. It's a yes from me. So the good news is they were sold at auction. Guess how much they raised? Unbelievably. Over forty-four and a half thousand pounds. Those right. little trunklets made by La Perla, who just make naughty knickers, is basically what they make. Joe, tell us about your naughty knickers. No, they were. It wasn't just naughty. I got married in La Perla. I got a, I had a nice <laughs> and nothing else. 
Oh, yeah, can you imagine? That would have cleared the place, wouldn't it? <laughs> the thought of me in just me undies, it's not a good one. Oh, okay, shut so. your face. But the good news is, but in Daniel fact, Craig and those little blue ones, I sound like a right perv. Move on. <laughs> I was going to say, if you saw me in my undies, this is what you'd be doing. Covering no, your ears. Stop. So everyone thinks that this bloke is screaming. He's not. He's covering his ears because it's actually nature who's screaming. It's called in in uh, the native language. It's called skrik, which means it means shriek. But it's actually nature itself which is screaming. And um, Edvard Munch was crossing the uh, the fjord one night, and the colour of the sky and the colours of the earth were so bright and so vibrant. He actually felt like nature itself was screaming at him. He actually did four copies of this: two oils and two pastels. Both of the oils were nicked. Uh, luckily returned finally found um mm. and the pastel at the time re reached um the most a painting had ever been sold for at sotheby's it was 120 million dollars so yeah wow. not bad going mr munch for your not screen good. yeah so basic now the good news is we have now finished so we've got some other things joe bung us the bonus question what's the bonus we like a big number come on we do like a big number. So, if you'd had a gin, if you'd had a shot of gin every day since the first uh, World Gin Day, which is normally on the second Saturday of every month, how many tops of gin would you have had? Mm, by today. tonight. By tonight. Mm. Yeah. And I promised you a big, uh, a big discount on something. This is this is a cracking actual. So we've been we've been following the journey of the discovery box tonight. We will give you free delivery UK wide of a discovery box and anything else you put in your basket. Yeah, oh, Philip. Oh. I just want to ask Philip the gymnasium something. Why is he saying no? What are you knowing at? <laughs> oh, what's he saying? Oh, no, no. I don't know. Oh, is that maybe he's just screaming? I don't know. Any we'll find. Oh, we'll ask him. So if, it, if you go on to www.yorkgin.com and you put a discovery box in there anything else for example big bottle one of, of these pennies one of these or pinnies. a penny or anything or a, else or a, or a, a tea towel with vinny vinny anything vinny at all it. anything vinny 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 anything <laughs> at all you will then get free delivery for absolutely everything in your basket at that time oh i'm putting that straight in my basket oh it's going in my basket yeah. that's right Basket. Jojo, tell us the answer. The answer is dun dun dun, dun, dun. Uh, 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 seven hundred and twenty-seven shots of gin because the first, the world's first, the world gin day uh, first occurred on the 9th of June in twenty eighteen. So yes, you'd have had seven hundred and twenty-seven shots. And don't forget, it's another whole week till the actual York uh, world gin day, not York gin day, York. world gin. Day. so you've got a chance to get a few more down in before then ah. keep taking that chin. and have you got a little spot prize winner for us i do let me just check the scores on the drawers and it's <laughs> angie skillback yay well done angie amazing well all that leads us through i'm sorry we've run on a bit we had so much to tell you it is world gin month we were like full exactly. of stuff tonight. just gone over a bit we've just gone over a bit we're very sorry about that do you know next week you're in for a total joy? Next week it's oh, we're going to take you to paradise. Woo! You hold us to that. So all it remains for me is to say thank you. We want to say thank you to Emma thank as you. always. Thank you to Guy who's been an absolute star tonight. Thank you to Bryony. Thank you to Simon. Thank you to everybody who works in our fabulous shop at York Gin. We love you all and we're very sorry. We want to say happy birthday to Deb Conroy for yes. tomorrow. Thank you, I've, Deb. I've already said it about three times because I, oh, I've God. missed it. Well, I couldn't hear because of the hail. It was also, it was a bloody No, 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 not here. I've missed, I've missed an entire day out this week. I nearly didn't turn yeah. up tonight because I thought it was Thursday. Oh, it's that way. Literally. I keep getting my day wrong all week, so... Yeah, that, I can vouch for that. And also, thank you to Danny Lockwood for help again this week. And I'm sorry, my technology is shocking because a hailstone.